Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Axle Off-Road. Yo, check it out. Today in the shop, we have this Jeep Cherokee, also known as an XJ. We're going to be pulling apart the front Dana 44 and changing the components. So let's get this XJ up on the bin pack lift, and we're going to raise it up in the air. You can see here he has a Dana 44 aftermarket cover. We're just going to be removing the bolts. That way we could pull the cover off, drain the oil. So check this out. While I was removing the differential cover bolts, I noticed that one of, well, actually three of the bolts on the cover were sheared. Customer actually takes his XJ off-roading and you can tell where the differential dragged on the rocks. So I have a solution for that. Here in my hand, I have a nut buster. I'm just gonna use that to help get it off. All right, once I have it secured on there, I'm just gonna use my impact, run it out. And you can see here, it's sheared off pretty good, so that nut buster kit came in handy. I have two other bolts that are the same way, so I'm just gonna use that nut buster kit on it. You can see those are in the same shape. So it's uh, very good to have that tool in your toolbox whenever you run into an issue like this. It helps make things easier and also faster. Man, that differential looks good on the inside, huh? Hey, we got the oil drained out of it, and we're just kind of doing a test run, just turning it just to see how that ring gear uh, functions okay with the bearings. All right, so let's get this XJ lowered. We're going to bring it down lower to the ground. That way I could take both tires off on each side. This will allow us access to all the drive components for the front differential, including the axle shafts, the bearings, the seals, and that sort of thing. All right, I'm going to take the wheel spacers off. This customer uses wheel spacers. And then next, I'm going to take the RCV shaft cover off. All right, we're going to be taking the bolt out of these brakes. We're going to take the caliper off. Once you take that bolt out, go ahead and grab your crowbar and a hammer. And then we're going to tap on that sliding retainer that holds the caliper in place. Just going to give it a few taps, and it should slide right out. And there it is, it just pulled right out. Seemed to be pretty easy, didn't have any major issues with it. Once we do that, then this customer uses RCV shafts. There's some well-built shafts that are made similar to CV shafts instead of a universal joint. We're just gonna pull that apart. You gotta pull it apart step by step. We refer to the RCV shaft manufacturer's manual. That way we knew exactly how to tear it down piece by piece. And I'm just gonna continue to demonstrate that here in case you have RCV shafts on your ride and you wanna tear it down in order to access the differential. All right, grab your snap ring pliers, and we're going to take the snap ring out so we can get to the next section of the shafts. And then now we're down to this sort of like packing here, so we're going to just remove that old packing and get that out. We'll be putting it back once we go back with the shafts, but for now we'll remove it. Hey, and one of the important things to remember is as you're taking these sections off piece by piece, make sure you put them back in the order in which they came off. That way they'll go back with ease and you don't lose any components. Now let me grab this four finger socket. It's a special socket that's made just for this retaining nut that's inside the shaft. We're gonna use it to back that shaft nut off.
All right, we're just gonna back off that last piece with the impact. Make sure you grab the rotor and hold on to it. That way it don't uh, fall off or come loose and you're able to grab that nut and get it off easily. There it is, it came out with no problem. Now it's time to take the rotors off. We're just gonna give it a tug and it should remove fairly easy. Oh, there it goes. Now that that's removed, we're gonna take the bolts that are holding the spindle onto the axle housing. I believe that's a 14 or 15 millimeter socket. We're just gonna remove all of them. Once that's removed, you're just gonna grab that, pull it off and get it out the way. As Mesh is demonstrating here, once that's out the way, guess what? Only thing left is to pull the shaft. Grab a hold of the shaft. We're using some gloves here so we don't get that uh, grease everywhere. And there it is, it pulls right out. So what's next? Well, we're gonna get the drive shaft pulled off. We're gonna get it set up out the way. That way we can uh, get the differential, get the differential bolts loosened up and then we'll take the bearing caps off. Then we'll get that differential pulled out. That way we can prepare it to install the new gears that's gonna go on that locker. You always wanna make sure you get that housing cleaned up real good. We just use uh, brake clean. It works well for what we gotta do. Then we get in there with some hand towels and just clean it all up real good for the customer. All right, grab your impact and your socket that goes for your pinion nut. You're gonna wanna remove the pinion nut. That way you'll be able to get your yoke off next. Here we're gonna use the air hammer. That way we could push the pinion right through the front. All right, we're going to take the locker and the ring gear, put it on our table, and we're going to get all the bolts out of that locker. That way we can knock the ring gear off. Got that off with ease. Next, we're going to make sure we clean the base real well. You want to make sure you get all that oil residue off of there. Then we're going to grab our awesome bearing puller. This is an ARB bearing puller. It's a clamshell design. You can see our other videos where we have the link in order to purchase one, and it works great. All you do is clamshell around the bearings. You use an impact to put it on the shaft. You tighten it up, and it just pulls it right off. As you can see, it also saves your bearings, so it kind of pays for itself. Check out our other videos demonstrating how to use it. All right, now we're going to get the new ring gear mounted. We heat up our ring gear. That way it slips on with ease. After that, we're going to put us some thread locker and put the bolts back in. Tighten them up with the impact. Not too tight. You just want to snug them up because you're going to be torquing them down. We use our press to hold our carrier as we go around torquing all the bolts to spec from the manufacturer. All right, next we're gonna get our new seals installed. What we do here is we use a 36 socket on a long extension. We put the socket up against the seal, and then from the other end, one of us taps the long extension in, and it slips that seal right on in there. It's actually a good technique that we found works every time. Just be careful not to mess your seal up when you're installing it. All right, next I'm gonna use my air hammer. That way I can knock the races out the original races that were in it and we can prepare that to get the new races installed set your race in there grab your race driver to the size that fits that race and then you're going to knock it in with your hammer until it sits flush and tight you want to make sure you have no gaps between the housing and the race you can also use an air hammer if you feel that that works better i tried both methods all right, you're going to grab your shim and your race. You're going to put them together. They're going to go in the axle housing together, and then you're going to press both of those in evenly. All right, stay with us, guys. We're almost done. We're going to stick the pinion through the front. And once we do that, we're going to get our bearing, our rear bearing, and our all slinger. We're going to put that on. And then now we can put our yoke on, now that the pinion's pushed through. And then you'll grab your washer and your nut, and you'll put that on. So one neat trick that we use because our drive shaft can get in the way is we use a bungee cord to hold the drive shaft out of the way to help us whenever we're working back there. 
There, now I know we're good. I got a little. All right, guys, let's grab the locking differential. We're gonna grab our shims and we're gonna install the carrier right on in there. Once we do that and we get it all snug where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and put the bearing caps on each side. It's important to make sure you put the bearing caps on the correct side that you took it off of. We're gonna tighten up the bolts and then we'll torque them down. Then we'll run us a paint pattern. Once we run that paint pattern, we'll be able to determine if we need to go deeper or shallower with the pinion and make adjustments from there. We're also going to use a dial indicator to check backlash to make sure we're in spec with what the manufacturer says we need to be at. So that's two important steps that you need to do when setting up gears. Hey guys, check out our new pinion preload tool. We use this to set the preload of the bearings. We tighten the bearings up to spec, what the manufacturer calls for. And we made this tool in-house. If you're interested, make sure you reach out to us at axleoffroad at gmail.com. Hey, we appreciate you watching the video, and we hope you enjoyed it.